Hello, everyone. As always, this is Jared Taylor from the Biology 112 teaching team here at UBC. In this video, I would like to continue discussing non-covalent interactions by introducing you to the hydrogen bond. If you haven't yet watched the previous video about non-covalent interactions, I encourage you to watch that before you watch this. As per usual, let me start with a question. In this case, what? What are hydrogen bonds? Actually, let me back up and start with a why question. Why are hydrogen bonds so important that they need their own video? The full answer to this will become apparent during your time in Biology 112 and any future biochemistry course, so I won't do a deep dive here. But let me say this. As I said in the last video, non-covalent interactions in general are incredibly important in biochemistry and biology. Life simply wouldn't be possible without them. Of the non-covalent interactions, hydrogen bonds hold a special honor. Even just considering the hydrogen bonds in water, and how they dictate many of water's awesome properties, is enough to put them in the non-covalent interaction hall of fame. But beyond water, hydrogen bonds are used all over the place in living cells. In fact, I bet that if you asked a bunch of biologists what the most important type of non-covalent interaction is, you would get hydrogen bonds as the answer most, if not all, of the time. Hydrogen bonds are prevalent in biochemistry, and you will see them everywhere in Biology 112 and future courses. So it is important for us to understand them. And so, back to our what are hydrogen bonds question. Hydrogen bonds are a subset of permanent dipole interactions, and they have all the hallmarks of a typical permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction. Both molecules involved have some kind of permanent dipole, and the two molecules are attracted by the interaction of a partial positive on one molecule and a partial negative on the other. Please note that in the structure shown here, I have not included the partial positive charges on the ring structure, but they do exist. So far, this is a typical permanent dipole to permanent dipole interaction. However, hydrogen bonds have certain required features that are not shared by all permanent dipole-based interactions. The first required feature is that each molecule needs an atom with a higher electronegativity and a partial negative charge. Okay, admittedly that part isn't really different from other permanent dipole to permanent dipole interactions. What is different is that one of the two electronegative atoms has a single covalent bond to a hydrogen atom. Due to the difference in electronegativity, this hydrogen atom will have a partial positive charge and the bond has a permanent dipole. The final required feature is that the other electronegative atom, in this case the nitrogen, has a free lone pair of electrons. The result is that the hydrogen atom and its partial positive charge are attracted to the lone pair of electrons on the partially negative atom. This interaction is known as the hydrogen bond because it is a hydrogen atom interacting directly with a lone pair of electrons. What is really unusual about this type of non-covalent interaction is that it is not truly non-covalent. In this case, the lone pair of electrons is being ever so slightly shared with the hydrogen atom, and this makes the interaction slightly covalent. Or, as we like to say, the hydrogen bond has a small amount of covalent character. The amount of covalent character involved is a matter of some debate among scientists at the time of this recording. Thankfully, we don't really need to worry about those details here in Biology 112. All you really need to understand is that because of these features, hydrogen bonds tend to be some of the strongest non-covalent interactions you will encounter, and certainly some of the strongest permanent dipole to permanent dipole interactions. In fact, they are so strong and so prevalent in biochemistry that we often classify them as their own type of interaction although you should remember that they are a type of permanent dipole to permanent dipole. Finally, I should mention that we have particular names for the two groups that form a hydrogen bond. The group that has the hydrogen atom is called the hydrogen bond donor, since it provides the hydrogen for the hydrogen bond. The group with the lone pair of electrons is called the hydrogen bond acceptor. And by the way, if you are wondering which atoms have lone pairs of electrons available for hydrogen bonding, we only have to worry about three of them. Oxygen and sulfur usually have two lone pairs of electrons available to accept hydrogen bonds, while nitrogen usually has one. 
A great example of this in action is of course water. Water molecules have two available hydrogens and two available lone pairs of electrons. This means each water molecule can donate two hydrogen bonds and accept two hydrogen bonds. In other words, every water molecule can make four hydrogen bonds with its neighbors. And with that, I will wind down this video. I hope this gives you some insight into the structure of hydrogen bonds and why they are so important. You will see more details about them and plenty of examples of where they are important during Biology 112.